What's quacking my digital ducks? Elite Trainer Hugo here with a Pokemon challenge video. Yeah, I know a lot of people do these things with various combinations of Pokemon, but you know what? I enjoy watching them, so why not? Let's give it a go myself. Now, there are many Pokemon to choose from, and lots of them have very strange gimmicks that make for very interesting runs. Others just make the run make you want to rip your hair out in ultimate frustration. Oh, trust me. <laughs> We're going to get to Delibird one day. But today, I thought we'd try something with a Pokemon that's near and dear to this channel. Porygon. For those of you who don't know, Porygon is a Pokemon that is won at the Celadon Games Corner for a ridiculous 9,999 coins. But what if we started the game with him and just used him for the whole game? So... My question is, can you beat Pokemon Yellow using only a Porygon? Now the rules for this run are very simple. No hitting items in battle, and no use of TMs. That's right, we're doing that with Porygon. Porygon doesn't have the best moveset in the world, only learning moves as of level 23, which means we're stuck with Tackle, Sharpen and Conversion for a little while. The reason I'm not putting TMs on Porygon in this run is because... I think it'll make it a bit more interesting. If you guys want to use TMs, feel free. It helps. Porygon can have an absolutely amazing moveset by the end of the game if you decide to do so. But I just want to go bare bones. So the run begins in Pallet Town, where we decide to go exploring more, but Professor Oak stops us and catches a rather strange sounding Porygon in the tall grass. We meet our rival and he takes the Pokemon Professor Oak was going to give to us. So Oak decides to give us the Porygon he just caught. We battle our rival, and he uses an Eevee. Depending on what you do throughout the game, the rival's Eevee will evolve into one of the three evolutions available in this generation. It doesn't matter which one you go for, just battle him. We win, and he goes off to catch more Pokemon. We leave Pallet Town and head towards Viridian City. Get the parcel, bring it back to Oak, and exchange it for the Pokedex. An absolutely useless item that won't have anything to do with this run. Our next stop is Viridian Forest. Now, the forest is a lot easier in Pokemon Yellow than it is in Red and Blue. In those games, most of the bug catchers will have Weedle. But here in Yellow, because the game is based on the anime, the forest is just full of Caterpies, making it a bit of a cakewalk. But next, in Pewter City, is the first big hurdle of the run. Brock. Brock uses Rock-type Pokemon, which, with our very limited moveset, is going to prove a bit of a problem. I battle him, and I lose. But that doesn't last long. After a little bit of grinding, I come back and challenge him again. This is where I discovered how useful Sharpen is going to be in this run. Sharpen works the same way as Harden does with Formetapods and Kakunas, but instead of raising defense, it raises your attack. And here I was, thinking I was going to have to train Porygon to level 23 before the first gym. <laughs> here we get our first badge, and we head out of Pewter City towards Mount Moon. And here is where we discover the four worst things about the run. Quick Attack, Disable, Wrap, and the PSN. Quick Attack sucks because at this point in the game, you outspeed most things, but a lot of the trainers here have Raditas and Pidgeys. That know this move. They will use them on you and get some damage off on you, which will rack up very quickly. Disable causes one of your moves to be unusable for several turns, meaning you are going to be struggling if your only attacking move gets disabled early on in the battle. Rap is notorious in Gen 1 as it keeps attacking you for multiple turns, meaning you cannot attack, and the PSN is just poison. Status just sucks in general in solo runs. After going through the route and suffering from it, we make it to Mount Moon. This area is really easy, as we only really have two battles to do, the Super Nerd guarding the fossil and Team Rocket. Yes, Team Rocket are in this game, and it's Jesse and James from the anime, taking the place of some of the random grunts. That's a nice touch. Made me very happy when I was a kid playing this for the first time, as I loved the anime a lot. We exit Mount Moon and make it to Cerulean City. We head north and battle our rival, and get our butts handed to us. He is proving to be a bit too much for just Tackle to take care of, so I did some grinding and eventually got to level 23, where Porygon learned Psybeam. 
And this makes this part of the game stupidly easy. We take out our rival and we head forward across the Nugget Bridge, beat the Rocket Grunt and quickly take a detour to talk to the man who gives us a free Charmander. He is going to be one of our three HM users in this run. I named him Like, which is what you should probably do on this video right now if you haven't already. We take our time going through this route and eventually get to Bill's house, get the SS ticket and head back to Cerulean to take on Misty. Her Stami is a bit scary, but if you use Sharpen, you can get the second badge. At level 28, Porygon learns Recover. Recover is our secret weapon in this run, along with Sharpen. Recover can be used to heal yourself in battle. It isn't as good as throwing a Hyper Potion or a Full Restore on Porygon, but it helps in a pinch and makes it much more bearable. If you want to skip using this move, you can. You're just going to have a bit of a harder time. Vermilion City is next, and we quickly go through the SSN as we only need to fight our rival here. He is still a challenge, but with Psybeam and Recover, he's not that much of a problem. We finish him off and rub the captain's back to get HMO1 cut. I teach cut to like, then we go to take on our third gym. I solve the puzzle, we take on Lieutenant Surge and his Raichu. His Raichu's moveset is a little bit strange. Mega Kick, Mega Punch, Growl and Thunderbolt. Recover helps a lot in this battle. So does Sharpen. After a while, you can actually take him out no problem and get badge number three. After beating Surge, I go over to Officer Jenny and get a Squirtle off of her to be our surfer. I call him Comment. Comment down below any suggestions for other future challenges you'd like to see. Now it's time to go to everyone's favorite area, Rock Tunnel. After stumbling around in the dark for 20 minutes, we arrive in Lavender Town for about five seconds. I want to open up the rest of the world. I also go into the tall grass and catch myself a Pidgey to use for later. His name is Subscribe. So, you know the drill. Subscribe! We head to Celadon City, buy a fresh water, give it to the guard, and then take on Erica. And she beats us. This is a running theme in this run, isn't it? Well, gotta go grind again. While grinding, I decided to go and take on Team Rocket's base in the game corner. This isn't difficult at all. Most of the Team Rocket grunts use Pidgeys and Machops at this point, so they can all be easily taken out with Psybeam. This is where we also get the second battle with Jesse and James, and they are much easier this time. Thank you, Psybeam. The battle with Giovanni is also quite easy. After beating him, we get the Silscope. We take on Erica and win our fourth badge. We get Fly and teach it to subscribe. We fly back to Lavender Town and take on the Pokemon Tower. Another rival battle happens here and it's very simple at this point as he doesn't really pose much of a threat. He has traded in his Rattata for a Magnemite and a Shelda. These are nothing to really worry about. We defeat him again and we climb the tower, battle the Ghost of Marowak and take on Team Rocket for a third time. Their team has evolved at this point, but besides that they're exactly the same as before. Stupidly simple. We rescue Mr. Fuji, get the Pokemon Flute, wake up a Snorlax, beat him for good measure, and then make our way down south to Future City. Also, by the way, Porygon leveled up, thanks to a rare candy I got in the Pokemon Tower, and learnt Tri-Attack. This move is the best move of the run. Downside is, he only has 10 PP. I would personally recommend teaching this move over what either Sharpen or Recover, if you want to have more power points for later on in the game. I didn't do that, because I don't have the power of hindsight like I do now. Past me is an idiot. As soon as we get to Future City, I recommend getting the Safari Zone done straight away. Here we get the Gold Teeth for the Warden and Sir from the Secret House. Give the Teeth to the Warden, obtain Strength. We go into the gym and take on Koga, and he beats us using one of my favourite moves in the whole series, Toxic. Being badly poisoned is probably the worst thing that can happen in this run. After losing, I decide to take a very quick detour over to Saffron City and take on Team Rocket in the Sylph building. The standard grunts are no problem at all, but you will be running low on PP very quickly if you battle all of them. I managed to hold off healing until we got to the beds near the end of the section, but if you can't do that, don't be afraid to go to the Pokemon Center and heal up. We face our rival again, and this time he has a few more tricks up his sleeves. He now has a sand slash that can get a critical or two. His shelter is now a cloister, which is super bulky and has clamp, which works exactly the same way as wrap. 
Magneton has Sonic Boom, which can add up super quickly. And then he has his secret weapon, Kadabra, who also has Recover. Which he used on the first turn. Dude, seriously, attack, you have a Kadabra. Also, his EV at this point will evolve. In this run, he is a Flareon, which is the middle of the road run. If you beat him, including the optional battle at the beginning or on the way to Victory Road, he will have a Jolteon, which is definitely the hard mode of this game. And if you just lose the first fight and don't do the optional fight, he has a Vaporeon, which is easy. I decided to go middle of the road because why not? After beating the rival, we go through the portal and head towards Giovanni. But first, we have one last fight with Jesse and James, and they don't put up much of a fight. Giovanni's team is a little bit different this time, um, having two poison types on it now. His whole team goes down with Psybeam, apart from Persian, who goes down to a critical try attack. I defeat him, get the Master Ball, and head to Sabrina. That's right, I decided to go for Sabrina instead of Koga first. She's probably the best gym to go for here, as she only has three Pokemon, and all of them are really easy to take out with Tri Attack. She uses an Abra, Kadabra, and Alakazam. Alakazam would be a problem, as it's faster than us, but she decides to use our rival strategy on us. We get the badge and head back to Fuchsia to take on Koga. We are at a much more comfortable level to beat Koga now. One-shotting two of his Venonats along the way and not getting poisoned during the battle will help a lot. That's badge number six, only two more to go. We fly back to Pallet Town and surf down to Cinnabar Island and take care of the Pokemon Mansion. This area in this game gives me a headache. Not because of the puzzle or anything like that, but because of the color palette. Look at it, it makes you want to vomit. We get the gym key and we take on Blaine in his gym. Blaine actually gave me a bit of trouble. His team is really fast, so they always attack first and potentially get crits. And they also have fire type moves, which can cause burn, which means any sharpens you do are null and void. But after banging my head against the brick wall that was Blaine for about an hour, we managed to beat him and get badge number seven. On to the final gym. We fly to Viridian City and go into the final gym. Giovanni's waiting for us and he starts off with one of the fastest Pokemon in the game, Dugtrio. And it has Fissure. Better hope he misses. After beating Dugtrio, he goes to his Nidoqueen and uses Double Kick, which is super effective on us, and then to Nidoking, which does the exact same. He will then send out Persian, but it isn't a huge problem. And then his ace, Rhydon. Rhydon also has a one hit KO move, that being Horn Drill. But in Gen 1, one hit KO moves are based on the Pokemon speed stat and it being a ride on that means we're not going to have any problem with this. We get our final badge, Team Rocket is disbanded and we head to the Pokemon League. But before that we have to fight our rival again. But he isn't that much of a problem to take care of. Then we go through Victory Road and the puzzle doesn't take too long, it takes about 20 minutes and then we reach the Indigo Plateau. Now, the Elite Four are all we have left of this challenge. And to be honest, this is where I ran into a big problem. You see, if we only have Psybeam and Tri-Attack, that gives us 30 power points to get through the Elite Four and Champion. There are a total of 26 Pokemon in the Elite Four. That means we have to get super lucky and one-shot almost all the Pokemon to even stand a chance at beating the game like this. That is why I recommended not getting rid of Tackle earlier in this video. By the end, you will be out of PP and you'll have to face your rival. So be sure before you do that to pick up some elixirs. There's one in the Pokemon Tower on the fourth floor. And there's one on the way to Bill's house to make sure that you have PP to go through. Using the Sharpen strategy helps with Lorelei. And most of Bruno's Pokemon go down to one hit with a Psybeam anyway. But Agatha, Agatha's a different story, guys. I'm actually really surprised that Agatha gave me as much trouble as she did. Her Pokemon all hit hard, have bulky special stats, and probably won't be able to be one-shotted effectively. Also, her move sets are freaking crazy! She uses Confuse Ray constantly, and she also causes poison and sleep, and she'll wail on you with Rap from her Arbok, and if you're asleep, Dream Eater from the Haunter and the Gengars. She took a long time, and even a mini grinding session, and I eventually took her down. Lance is about as easy as Lorelei is at this point. Then we face our rival. If you've beaten Agatha and Lance, this battle isn't difficult. 
Sharpen, try attack, take out most of his Pokemon, and you'll become champion. Proving that yes, it is possible to be Pokemon Yellow only using a Porygon. So, how did we do? Overall, this run took seven and a half hours, which isn't that bad at all, actually. I'm, I seriously thought it was going to take a lot longer than that. This run had a few roadblocks, namely Brock, Koga, Blaine, and Agatha. But all the challenges in this are beatable just by getting a lot of luck. And even with the game's limited moveset, it is possible. If you were to do this run, I would recommend using TMs because you can have an amazing moveset at the end. Like Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Psychic to replace Psy Beam for a much better attack. But yeah, if you want to try it, I recommend giving it a go. It's a fun run. But that's the video. I hope you enjoyed this style of video. It's something very different for me and I had an absolute blast making it. If you have any suggestions for other challenges, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when new videos come out. Until next time, my digital ducks. This is Elite Trainer Hugo, signing out.